Hi, and welcome back. It's been a busy couple of months. When I released the last update, I thought about 200 people might download it. And then Mylar Melody said this. What I want to show you today is a piece of software called SoundThread. Mate, yes mate, mate. <laughs> I mean, mate, mate. Ugh. And now SoundThread has been downloaded over 18,000 times. Thank you to the thousands of you who've made bug reports and suggested ideas and pointed out issues in the documentation, and an extra huge thank you to everyone who supported this project on Coffee. If you'd like to help support the future development of SoundThread, there is a link to the Coffee below. This video is going to take a look at the new update to SoundThread that is being released today. This update focuses on two main things, processes with multiple inputs and improving user experience. One of the biggest changes in this update is the introduction of about 20 new processes that take multiple input files and combine them, morph them, or warp them together in some way. There is a mix of frequency domain and time domain processes that can do this. We're going to take a quick look at a simple example to start off with using replace envelope. Replace envelope takes two inputs. It takes the envelope, the amplitude, how loud the second input is, and applies it to the first one. Here I'm using two sounds, one is a synth drone, and one is some drums. And combined in this way, it works like sidechain gating. Let's take a look at a slightly more interesting example. This example uses freeze morph, which takes two input files and freezes them statically in time. It then morphs from one to the other. This is part of the frequency domain combine section of new processes that have been added. This is the largest section of things that have been added in this update, and it does really interesting things at combining and warping sounds. Here I'm using this piano file, specifically that moment in time and this chimes recording at this moment in time and freeze morph is going to freeze them at those two points and morph them over 30 seconds Now with these processes that have multiple inlets, some of them will allow you to add and remove inlets. But for anything that has more than one inlet, you must have all inlets connected for SoundThread to view it as valid. In this example, if you had three inlets and you only wanted to use two, you just have to remove one. As well as bringing support for processes with multiple inputs, this update also allows you to adjust the FFT size and overlap. This will affect how the pivot analyze nodes perform their analysis and will affect your output sound. In this example, we're going to use formant vocode, which takes two inputs and takes the formants from the second input and imposes them on the first sound. Here, using the default FFT size and overlap, If I increase the FFT size, I will get a better frequency resolution, but a worse time resolution. An overlap will increase the quality of the analysis, but increase the amount of time that it takes to process. If I change this instead to quite a small analysis window and a lower overlap, we're going to get much better time resolution, but much worse frequency resolution. Changing these settings will have a pretty drastic effect on your sound overall, and it's something you should experiment with. By far the most common request I've had is to make it easier to patch and build a thread. Everything you could previously do still works, but there's a number of improvements in this update. For example, if I wanted to replace the distort average in this thread, in the past I would have to click on it, delete it, add a new node, and then patch that back in. 
but now I can just right click on the node itself and search for what I'd like to replace it with, and it will keep the connections to that node wherever possible. If I'd like to connect something to it directly, I can now hold shift and right click and it will give me the option to connect directly to it. I can choose what I'd like to connect and it would make that connection for you. If I'd like to place something in between these two nodes, in the past I would have to make a node, add it, disconnect it, bring it in, but now I can just take a node, drag it and hold shift and connect it directly in between the two. The next major improvement to patching comes with the cables themselves. If we have a scenario like this where I have multiple nodes all connecting to one point, if I wanted to change or edit the connections, the only way to do this in the past would be to click on the input and it would remove them in the reverse order you connected them. Instead, now you can just click on a cable directly, it will highlight it and you can press backspace or delete to remove it. You can also click on multiple cables while holding shift to select multiple and delete them. There is also significantly improved undo and redo, so we can now press Ctrl or Command Z or Ctrl or Command Y to undo and redo respectively and there are also buttons on the top left to do this. This is quite a lot of keyboard shortcuts to remember, so in help, other help, you will find keyboard and mouse shortcuts, which is a window that you can use to remind yourself of these different shortcuts. The next major improvement for usability relates to the reuse last output folder. This is now retained between multiple runnings of SoundThread, so if you close the program and reopen it, it will still remember the last folder you used. If you'd like to change which folder it's outputting to, you can just turn off reuse last output folder and run the thread and it will give you the option to choose a new folder. Additionally, there's been a number of changes to the settings to add more features, in particular related to accessibility. With theming, we can now invert the UI colors so that you get black text on a light background and this works particularly well with light themes to make them more readable and easier on the eye for those who like to use them. You can also change the contrast of the cables, so rather than being a complementary colour to your background theme, there'll be a colour that contrasts strongly against it. There is also now UI scaling, so you can make the UI larger or smaller to better suit your screen size. And some options to swap how moving around with the mouse wheel and scroll work, and the ability to set your right click to always use the explore menu instead of the search menu, which is particularly helpful for those who are new to SoundThread and want to see everything that's available. It's now possible to drag input files from your system file browser into SoundThread. If you drag a file over an input node, it will load it directly into that input node, replacing whatever was loaded into it previously. Or if you drag input files, including multiple files, into empty space, it will make new input file nodes for you directly. This update brings an option to favourite specific processes. There is a favourites tab in the explore menu, and if you click the star next to any process in the explore menu, it will add this to your favourites, and you can browse them all under this tab, or in the search menu, it will show a star next to your favourite processes, and you can search these using an asterisk to filter only your favourited processes. All nodes in SoundThread that contain sliders now have this exclamation button on them, which will allow you to randomise the settings in that node. Please note that it may not be a good idea to randomise all settings on a node, and it's your job to make sure the ranges are sensible. Here, for example, it has set scan speed to 0.16, which is going to make a very long file. Here, my input file is only 24 seconds long, so it's only about two and a half minutes, but if you'd loaded in a 10 minute file, you'd make an output file that's about an hour and a half long. Here, these settings look reasonably sensible, except for the amplitude. It's making the output really quiet, so I'm gonna turn that up and run it. This can be a really useful way for finding new sounds out of SoundThread, but you can also just double click on a slider now to reset it to its default value. So if anything seems really odd, you can just double click on it and reset it back to what I had decided was a reasonably sensible starting point. And that's all the major changes in this update. Please remember that SoundThread is in beta, so there will likely be bugs. If you find any bugs, please do report them on GitHub. To update to this version, you can download it from GitHub, which is linked below. There are written install instructions with every download and please read them carefully. 
If you're updating from a previous version, the process is nice and simple. You do not need to reinstall CDP. Just delete your old version of SoundThread and replace it with the new one you have downloaded. If you're on a Mac, you'll need to reapprove it to run through the system settings, and this is detailed in the install instructions. If you're installing for the first time, I've produced an updated install video, which you can find linked below, that walks through installing a CDP and SoundThread on Windows, Mac, and Linux, including the new version for ARM64 Linux that can run on a Raspberry Pi. Now that the craziness of the past few months has slowed down a bit, I'm going to get back to producing videos on using SoundThread every couple of weeks on this channel. If you have any suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, please do let me know in the comments. Once again, a huge thank you to everyone who supported this project on Coffee. You really help keep the project going. That's all for now, and I'll see you all next time.